Hi there from the Netherlands. I, uh, I went for a walk outside thinking about private property because I'd seen an article somewhere on the internet that asked a, to my opinion, very stupid question. How did private property ever get started? The people who wrote that article seem to think that communism is somehow the base position for all human beings and all societies always and that uh, the introduction of private property namely that it was introduced at all, is somehow uh, an aberration of, of history. Uh, I'm here to tell you otherwise. Uh, when a mother has a baby in her own belly, the, the child is made of her flesh and her own blood flows to the child and the nutrients pass on through the child. Um, as long as the child is connected to the mother inside her womb, that is her private property. And only when the child comes out, does the child, you know, after the umbilical cord is cut, does the child slowly become himself. He becomes his own when he learns to walk, walk away from mommy, for example. Um, the child starts to live his own life. Then it is his own. But while the child, the baby, the, f the fetus is still in the, in the womb of the mother, it is essentially the mother's property. That means that private property is a natural, um, uh, a natural phenomenon. Uh, no other woman is allowed to cut a baby out of another woman's womb. When this does happen, this traditionally throughout history has always been considered an extreme crime of theft. You, a theft, you've stolen the baby from a mother's womb and in the process you either badly, severely wounded that mother and in most cases she would not survive. There's another example of the primordial nature of private property and that is this. If I am a cow and I eat the, the herbs, the green leaves that basically I don't own, I don't own the pasture and I don't own the plants, I don't own any of these things, but I eat from them. I eat the green leaves, they enter into my stomach. As soon as the food I've eaten is in my stomach, it is mine. It is my property. I have the right to digest it and take the nutrients out of the food to make it become part of me. Is it theft? When a cow eats green leaves or a horse eats some grass, is it theft? Is the horse stealing? In a natural environment, the grass, the green leaves, the herbs, they just grow there. Nobody owns it. Uh, but the cattle who move through these areas and the pastures and the forests, they can just graze all they want and they will then become the owners of what is in their stomachs, right? It's not theft. It is theft to steal uh, the baby from a mother's womb because that is her property. The leaves and the greens growing on the plants and the trees, they are technically the property of the of the trees and the and the grass but as soon as a cow eats these things it becomes his own it becomes his property its property now what if a tiger attacks a cow and the tiger kills the cow and eats the meat is it murder in the natural world there's no such thing as murder murder is usually intraspecies uh, if, a, if a man kills another man, we call it murder and we have a whole legal circus around that. But if a tiger kills a cow in the wild, that's not murder. That's harvesting. That's how pastoralists, uh, cattle farmers call it. When they kill a cow, they don't call it murder, they call it a harvest. You've harvested the cow and now the meat is yours. And just as the tiger can eat the meat of the cow, uh, swallow it, digest it, it is now Inside the stomach of the tiger, it is the tiger's property. Why? Because he made the kill. That's it. That's why he took it first. He took the cow down first, so now it's his. It's the same reason that the cow ate that patch of grass, that pollen or that green leaves. Now that is the property of the cow. So private property is a, a primordial aspect of life on earth. So there is then a difference between harvesting and uh, stealing. Harvesting is really not the same thing as stealing. When cows graze, they are harvesting the greens. They're not stealing the greens. Nobody owns this uh, pasture. Uh, but you might ask, okay, wait a minute, what if a lion eats a human being? Isn't that theft? No, 
that's not theft. That's also harvesting. When a lion eats a human being, uh, uh, basically when my flesh is inside a lion's stomach, it's his. He owns that piece of me. And I no longer do. It's not theft. It's harvesting. Now, wait a minute. Am I saying that uh, theft only works in relation to other human beings and their claims of property? Yes. If you've eaten something and I somehow fish the food right out of your uh, right of your intestines, right out of your intestines, and well, that is theft because you've eaten it. It's in your stomach. It's yours. If I somehow pry it out, take it out of your stomach against your will, that is, that is theft. Theft is a legal aspect of human life that human beings have agreed with one another don't do this and this, such and such we have laws and morals but when um, when a lion tries to steal another lion's kill right it's stealing but it's not legal theft it's a big difference uh, in the natural world lions do not make laws with one another but lions do have a sort of morality, the lion morality. I'll give you an example. It sounds maybe a bit ludicrous to you to think that animals can have a morality, but it's true. If you observe the behavior of lions, you're going to discover something, namely that uh, lions will kill hyenas, lions will kill gazelles, lions will kill their, even tigers, they will kill their enemies and eat them if they can. But lions generally, uh, when they kill other species they go for the throat they choke you and then you die and then they eat you uh, and it's very important to understand that a lion won't do this to other lions generally uh, if male lions gang up on a, a intruder a male another male lion that they, they don't want in their territory what they tend to do is they go for the back for the spine and the lower back and they will use their teeth to crack the bone or to crack uh, uh, the spinal cord so that the uh, the mill line that they wish to disable uh, can no longer move its hind legs and therefore the threat is neutralized and they will still uh, ravage it and hurt it and kill it and scratch it and make it bleed but they will not choke their enemy they will break its back so this is lion morality lions don't choke each other you only do that to prey you do that to other species but lions among each other they might break each other's back if they want to get rid of someone <clears throat> they don't uh, they don't choke their own uh, uh, kind but there's one exception is when uh, adult lions or lionesses as well somehow for some reason want to get rid of their cubs they will choke their cubs and kill them so in the natural world, if you would stumble upon a natural pasture of green leaves, even though the leaves are not your property, you can take them from the trees and from the plants and digest them and they become yours. The same is true, uh, for example, for a patch of, uh, say, a field of uh, flax. Uh, you take some of the flax and you weave it into a thread and you use the thread to create uh, a shirt. And then you put on the shirt you wear it. Now it's yours. See what happened? You took the flax that belonged to no one, but through your own labor, you processed it into something that became your property. You turned the flax into a thread and you turned the thread into a shirt. And now it's your shirt. You put it on. It's yours. If someone else wants to have a shirt, they can take the flax, some of the flax, make their own thread and make their own shirt. But if they want to take the shirt off of you, the one you made, that's theft. See, that's the difference. When, when people engage with one another, um, if I've eaten something that's in my stomach or I've produced something from the natural world, I've taken resources from the natural world and I've made something my own, I've created something with it, like a shirt or a sweater or a spear, now it's mine. I produced it. Um, the reason is that if you take it from me, it's going to cost me. I will have to uh, go out to the flax field again, make more thread again, and produce another, weave another shirt again. I will have a cost. And because I, uh, you are not allowed to take my shirt off of me, because when you do, you are incurring a cost onto me. I am then forced to produce another shirt for myself. So why don't you make your own shirt? Or if you want mine, 
you gotta pay for it. You gotta trade me something that you have. Maybe you've got some gold coins. Yeah. So theft, <clears throat> the idea of theft arises only from the idea of private property. If there were no private property, there were no theft. The reason you can take some flax from a natural flax field is because no one owns it. So it's not theft to take it. But when you do and you make a shirt out of it, it is your shirt. Why? Because you put in the time and the effort and the skill and the knowledge and the intellect. Yeah? You added value to it. That value came from you. It came from the skill in your hands and, and the idea in your mind. You envisioned a certain shirt and you made it and you designed it. You added value to the natural world, to a part of it, right? Not all of it. And then it is yours. That is private property. So when leftish thinkers, communistic thinkers say that uh, private property is theft, that's impossible because theft is derived from private property. And private property is derived from you uh, taking resources from the natural world and adding something to it, adding something of value to it. Okay, now what about owning a private home? In our world, you only get to own a home if you pay for it. And for most people, that means you work for it. You have to get a job, have a regular income, and maybe you need to borrow money, a uh, mortgage, and then you pay off the mortgage. So that house, um, uh, in the end, your own labor, your effort, your skill is added to the house. The longer you pay for your house, the more of your skill and effort you've put into the house. That is why it is yours. It becomes your house, your property, because you've added your life to it. Okay, let's, let's do another example. What about um, a gold mine? A gold mine that is presently part of the natural environment. No one owns it yet. And even the land that this mine is in is not owned by anybody. I stumble upon this mine. I find it. How can I claim it is mine? Well... Here, usually in such a condition, such a case, uh, something else happens among people, namely that um, I claim the mine as my own because I intend to exploit it. That means I'm going to invest in it. I have to gather a group of men willing to work on the mine. That means there are other things they could have done, but I have to convince them to work on the mine instead. So I have to pay them. I have to pay them a salary. I have to gather the equipment. I have to gather the knowledge. I have to educate myself in gold mining. How do you even do this? How do you build a mine? I have to take care of the safety of the men. I have to put in thinking into that. Maybe I will need to have to hire an overseer or a manager or an accountant and so on and so forth. I see what happens. I add a lot of um, personal value to the project, to the mine, even though it was just there, I found it and then I claimed it was mine, but I could only do so because of what was going to happen in the future. I was going to make an investment and in order for me to make that investment, it has to be my property. Now, in most cases nowadays, you will not stumble upon a mine or if you do, it will be on somebody else's land that they already own. So, okay, land ownership then. How is that even possible? Let's go back to the lions in Africa. When lions uh, live in a certain territory where they hunt, their hunting grounds, it will be usually the lionesses who will be doing the hunting. Uh, they will hunt for gazelle, for example, or uh, wildebeest. Uh, how come we can say that human beings can own a territory when the lions don't? Well, ha, actually, you see, lions have a sort of legal system as well. A lion pride will occupy a certain territory. It is generally defended by the males of the pride. They put in their personal risk. They risk fighting the hyenas and other uh, competing predators to keep them out of the territory so that the available so that the prey in that territory becomes available to the lionesses. And, if, and this is what the lionesses pay the alpha male lion for, for his service, for his protection of the territory he gets the prima noctum, he gets to eat first. So among lions, there is always a conflict, a struggle for territory. 
lion males who want to have a pride will have to conquer Rwanda, and that includes the territory, and they will have to defend the territory against other males, so that only for a few years of his life, and only if they're very successful, since most male lions are not successful, but the few that are successful in conquering a tribe and the territory, they spend a few years living a ferocious life defending that territory at all cost, even at their personal cost, because many of these lions eventually are killed. Uh, invading lion males will then break their backs, and that's the end of you. So because you put in that risk, that effort, even sacrificing your own life for a territory, that is why a lion male can consider that territory his. Now, we humans can own the national reserve where those lions live presently. That is because the human legal system is only intra-human. It's intra-species within the species, not between, not inter-species. That means the human conceptions of law uh, don't yet apply to those of lions. And this is why human beings can also conquer territory with the lions in it. We can claim that territory as our own, but we can only do so because we are also putting in our time and effort in the defenses and setting up the perimeter and so on and so forth. But wait a minute, communists say that we can just abolish all types of ownership altogether. Uh, why can't it be so that no one owns the world? And that would also imply that lions no longer own their territories. Is that even possible? That could lions work together and share the territory with one another? The answer is no, because the reason is there are always too many lions born and too few, uh, not enough territory for all of them to live. So there has to be a conflict, struggle, competition, and only the best surface from that competition. And the same is true for human beings. Uh, one more problem is that uh, in, I mentioned those flax fields earlier, if you wanted to make some thread for a shirt. Imagine there are now a million people living around this flax field and they all need a shirt. See what happens? What happens is that within moments, within moments, uh, within a few days, that flax field will be completely stripped and uh, all the flax will be dead and there will not be more flax the next summer. It will be gone, depleted. So to prevent the depletion of natural resources, you have to set up a perimeter and defend it. Communists say that the state should do this, I mean, the world state, right? Not just a national state. Communists believe in a world government or the world state. And the world state is supposed to then somehow uh, allocate you your fair share, which is decided upon by the government for you uh, you can't even complain or appeal, they'll just say no. Uh, and this all comes down to uh, that in a communist system, uh, the state actually owns the people. And that is the little trick that they never tell you about. Say, wait, wait, what, wait. <laughs> in a communist world state system, a world economy, a world government system, the world government owns the people, just as we people can own a natural reserve with the lions in it, even though the lions think they own their patch and their turf. The world government would end up owning the humans. How do I know this? Because if the world government gets to allocate resources to people, then the world government also decides what people not to allocate to. If there are too many people which ones will have to be sent to the gulag? The disobedient ones. Which ones will not get food? Which ones will not have their food credits and their food stamps renewed? The ones the world government doesn't like. Which lions are shot in the natural reserve? The ones who attack the humans. Get it? Get it? If you are living in a world government and you disagree with the government and you fight the government, you will no longer have food. They will take you out because you fought the state, the world state. And this is why pri private property matters. If you have private property, if you own land, that basically means you have a defense against the world state. As long as you can defend your private property, no one will own you.